I am Brad Sykes, the uh, writer and director of Death Factory. Um, we did this movie for Brain Damage Films, and that's actually why we're here today at Fangoria to, uh, to show the film or promote the film and other stuff that Brain Damage has done. Well, my first question would be, uh, is how did you come up with the, the movie, the idea? Um, the idea was actually given to me. The producer gave me a little kind of synopsis, and they wanted to shoot something in a, in a warehouse location, which we, which we thought we had. And so I wrote around that, and it was supposed to be set in a factory, and it was going to be a killer in the factory. And there wasn't much to it. It was very minimal. So I was able to expand from that. And uh, then we got a, our location changed, so that changed the movie even more. But we still ended up with, you know, basically the, the premise, which, which was a group of people going into an old abandoned factory and being attacked by a monster of some kind. And uh, what was the length? Uh, how long did it take you to, to write the script uh, based uh, on the idea that you got? It took me around two, three weeks uh, from the point I started. Yeah, around there. And, and as far as uh, the drafts or rewrites, how many uh, rewrites or drafts, or was it? Basically, you done it. You guys filmed it. And yeah, basically that's what how we these saw. Movies are They're really like we really crank them out. I mean, at the risk of sounding flippant, I mean, they, there's very little time from the time that I get that I get you know, the job to, to do the script or to start pre-production and all that stuff. It happens very fast. I mean, the shoots are very fast too. So. And as far as your writing style, what, what were you? If you had any influences as far as your writing, was it based on other writers or some other source out there? Um, yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a good question because I mean I respect a lot of writers. Not necessarily. I, I, I don't really look at horror movies so much in writing. I mean, there's, there's certain scripts that I always go back to, like Taxi Driver. Or, you know, certain screenplays I really respect. But I don't. I don't know if I really have any real set influences. I think it kind of depends on the project. I mean, you know. And as, as far as uh, writing, um, what were some of your favorite uh, horror movies or movies in general that sort of feeded your interest in writing movies or screenplays? Um, well, there's a lot. I mean, I, I'll try to make it brief. I mean, I, okay, fine. American horror films of the 70s. Um, we're talking about Wes Craven and Toby Hooper and George Romero and John Carpenter and all those guys in you know, their early films. And, and then you're also talking about Italian horror. And there's a lot of other guys I could talk about, but I mean, those are sort of the basic, the guys who got me into this business who made me want to make films. As far as the filming process, are you ever there on a set to talk to the director of photography or director as far as if you see a scene, do you, got, do you, do you closely work with the with the, uh, with, with the crew as far as, well, you know, this is where I wrote, this is not how it looked? Right. You know, it depends on the DP. Some guys are more film literate than others. I try not to be real, like, uh, derivative and say, oh, this is the shot from, you know, Evil Dead where you know, Bruce Campbell's running up to the cabin and we're going to follow him. I mean, I try not to be that, like, you're not generic. Because some guys don't know, and yeah. I don't want to copy, I don't want to be too imitative. And with some DPs, you know, they're more, it's more tone, setting a tone for the piece and the atmosphere, as opposed to a specific shot or, you know, trying to quote a movie or anything like that. I, mean, I'm really, I try not to do that. And uh, within uh, the budget you have, uh, is it based on the idea of the screenplay that you get and you finish it, then you come with the budget, or you have some type of number that you have to work with uh, to fill out that palette as that's, far as you are? That's very much how it is. It's very okay. much based because I've done 13 of these movies, and uh, it's very much based around what you know you're going to get. You know, you know you're, you're not going to be able to do a, a scene of a, a battlefield of extras on horseback or something. You know, you're going to be in one location, or you're going to have three or four locations, and you're going to, you know, you're going to be, it's going to be minimal. It's going to be minimal casts, be minimal locations, be minimal shooting days. So, you know, you just, um, you adapt to that. It's really great. And uh, during the filming sequence, uh, sequences, are you usually up 24-7 just in case for whatever reason? Uh, or do you actually have time where actually you finish, your part is finished, or is it never really finished until the movie's finished? I would honestly say it's never really finished until the movie's finished, and my wife could attest to that. Sorry. No, it's true. I mean, it's the, the, because I'm, I'm sort of my, I'm sort of the AD. I'm, I'm the director. I'm the AD. I'm the prop guy. And I'm, you know, I'm this and that and the other. And so all these calls okay, and all this information sort of settles into, you know, my my apartment or whatever. And so I'm, I am pretty much on call. 
until the very last day of shooting. And even on this film, in Death Back, we, uh, you know, we, we, we shot, you know, we thought we were, we were going to be done with it a certain period of time, but it ended up a week or so going by before we really finished it. And during that week, I was, you know, I couldn't really return anything. I couldn't really, I couldn't really start anything new until I finished that. You know I mean, it's not a matter of getting up and, it's not a nine to five job. You know, you can't just go and then go home and leave your work behind. You, you really carry with you. So in other words, if, uh, if there's bills to be paid, that can't be in the whole fr uh, framework of who you are as, as far as this job is concerned. If, 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 my phone, if my phone was just paying bills, I wouldn't be doing these movies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because they don't, they, they don't pay very well. And, uh, and that's the truth, you know. Uh, I do it because I love making films. Because I hope that, you know, I, I work very, very hard on my, on my movies. And I hope that, you know, someone will see it and they'll say, this guy's got talent. And they'll do a bigger film. And I think that's why anybody does it. You know, number one, for the love of it. And number two, to, to try to, to achieve something better next time out. So. And my last question, uh, other than horror movies, uh, I know there's billions of movies out there. Can you name three movies that you like a lot, or favorite movies that are not necessarily horror or sci-fi movies? That are not necessarily horror. Horror, or are there any? I don't have a hard, no, actually, I, have, I don't have a hard time naming movies, non-horror movies. I mean, like one of my favorite films, I always say, is, is Misha, with Paul Schrader's Misha. Oh, wow. I'm a huge fan of Paul Schrader's work. I mean, he's not a horror director, except for cat people. Uh, you know, I went all the time with you know, Manhunter and Thief, and, and I, love, I love to do movies like that, so I don't have... Those, you know, David Lynch, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are doing great work that are not in the genre or that are on the skirts, outskirts of the genre or whatever. And so I'm not like, I don't just watch horror movies when I'm, you know, every time. And uh, do, whenever you have the time, do you still go out to the stores and actually physically buy DVDs or, or um, VHS or oh, yeah. get photos? Or? That's why I'm here. It's like, I mean, I've been here before. This is the first time I've been here as a guest. And uh, I just went downstairs and actually bought a copy of this Ruggiero Giordano movie called Body Count that I'd always wanted to see. I love Cannibal Holocaust and House in the Edge of the Park and all this stuff. So I was like, this is cool. There's a movie that I can't get on DVD. You know, so yeah, I'm still very much a fan and, and looking for, you know, looking to see what's new on DVD this week and all that good stuff. So, yeah. You know, this is an awesome interview. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and uh, I hope I asked some decent questions. Oh, great questions. And, uh, you know. Well, I'm talking about, I mean, I could talk about movies all day long. You know what I mean? So it's like... Cool. I, I dig it. Hope, yeah, I, I, I hope I did a decent job. My question is, where you were three years ago to where you are now, and you've seen all these people coming up to you, actually knowing basically your lines by heart, how does it make you feel or ask for your autograph? I mean, what goes through your mind that's, that's, sometimes? You know, that's weird. I mean, that's really, like, weird because, I mean, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't expect anyone who comes in here to know who I am. I absolutely don't expect that. I mean, I think it's very cool that people come in and want to, like, check out the fix and they, they're fans of it and everything. And, like, I want to support that. You know, I want to, like, just, it helps me. I mean, it helps me to be here, of course, to get my name out there and everything and support their films. But it's, I don't, I don't in any way think, I mean, I mean I'm sorry, but George Romero is across the hall. That's a celebrity. That's a guy I want to go see. I got my creep show DVD. Oh, there, true. And I want to go over there and get some, you yeah, know, the ladies of the evil dead, you know. So you're still a fan, obviously. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's, that's I mean, I'm, I'm going over there. I can't wait for that line to get a little short. So I'm going to go over there and, you know, that's, he's the man. You know? he's, the, he's one of the biggies. So yeah, I don't, uh, you know, cool. I'm not sitting here like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think it's cool anybody who comes in here and, and I'm really like, I'm happy to see him. And, uh, I, I like the fact, that, but I do like the fact that my movie's being supported. That's like really cool because filmmakers, I see a lot of guys downstairs who are hawking their wares and having to pay for the tables and everything. And that's, and that's, you know what? I mean, I, I know where they, I know what that feels like. I know what it's all about. So it's, you know. And that's basically it. You just heard the truth, the honesty, and this is what the show is all about. And uh, 